made for Patrick Chambers said that Chambers had said he was playing as if he had a noose around his neck that on ESPN.com's The Undefeated, that story broke over the summer. Stephen Bardo, BTN analyst, is with us. And Stephen, first of all, your reaction. I mean, this is a story that we talked quite a bit about over the summer. And then, you know, Mike DeCourcy was kind of saying he hadn't heard too much about it. Felt like maybe it had been resolved internally at Penn State. What do you think when you hear this news today? Well, I think it's unfortunate uh, because the situation causes a young man to come out and, you know, really expose a story nationally that typically you find that stays within the clubhouse or the locker room. So uh, it's an unfortunate situation. It happened. The facts are out. The, the inv investigation was done and they chose to part ways. And it's unfortunate, Dave, because, you know, we get to know these coaches working at Big Ten Network and we get to know uh, their families. You and I went to Philadelphia and did that game and we got to meet some of his large family in Philly and the special connection there. So it's I understand uh, that they needed to make this decision, but it's kind of bittersweet because uh, Chambers, I think, was building something at Penn State. Well, certainly had an ex extremely successful team this year. And I think now the question becomes, Stephen, how do they keep that momentum going? How big a challenge is it for Penn State to continue to succeed in basketball? Mike was outlining what a challenging job this can be. Yeah, it is challenging, Dave, but, you know, they do have a pipeline now that was established with Coach Chambers into Philadelphia. And that's a talent-rich area that if they can continue – to uh, keep those relationships in good standard. I think that they can continue to build. Um, you know, Pat Chambers went into areas that Penn State didn't get players previously. And if if Coach Ferry is the choice, because Sandy Barber mentioned, you know, it was mentioned that he would be a part of the national search for this position. You got to know that the timing of what's going on is going to favor Coach Ferry in this scenario based on the season starting November 25th. So it'd be interesting to see what, how this plays out. But um, if there is a bit of continuity from his uh, regime, I think it would benefit Penn State moving forward, at least for this season. Put yourself in the position of a player, Stephen, a player who was recruited by Patrick Chambers. And now here you are, you're a week in to practice essentially, and your coach is leaving. How tough is that in terms of keeping this team on the rails? Oh, it's very tough because you make a decision uh, largely based on the head coach, not solely, hopefully, on the head coach, but largely this is a, uh, a guy that's going to be sort of a father figure for you once you leave home. You know, this is the uh, you know, next step up in this progression that a lot of young men want to be, and they want to be – professional players. And this is the next step on that. And, you know, when you look at the situation, it's like it's, it's incumbent on who is going to be in charge because do you fit into what this system is going to be? And that's, it's all up in the air right now. I feel for those players, but I, I do want to stress that they are in a great situation because they are at Penn state university. And I'm not sure that um, whoever comes in that, that's a talented enough roster that they can do something with that. Stephen, I, I don't, we don't pretend to know what happened in this investigation. We certainly know the quote that Rashir Bolton shared, and you can certainly understand why that would be incredibly offensive to that young man. And so I, I don't want to put you in a position to speculate or anything like that, but I, I guess I'm asking you more broadly, kind of what does this tell us about college athletics, about the relationship between coaches and players, about, uh, you know, the situation surrounding race on college campuses right now, kind of, again, it's such a broad topic, but is there anything that you read into this which changes your point of view in any way today or makes you think in a different way than you might have thought an hour ago? Very well put, Dave. That's a great question. And, you know, I don't normally do this, but I'm willing to that my relationship, that Pat Chambers meant nothing malicious, prejudice, or anything by that statement. I understand how Rashir Bolton 
took it. I, I get it. I understand it. But I would, I don't think that Pat Chambers would say that in the nature that it's being portrayed. And so it's an, again, it's an unfortunate situation. There needs to be education on both sides from the player standpoint, because it can't, it can't always be about, you know, being new, being hip, being woke. It can't always be about that because everybody doesn't start from that position. And so there needs to be some education on both sides to bring both parties together, in my opinion, meaning coaches and players. I mean, we've, you know, there's some situations going on in another conference with another program with a coach and supposedly about his behavior. And there really needs to be a lot of education, in my opinion, on both sides. Uh, interesting take. Interesting you would say that. And I, I certainly know, you know, there are a lot of people who have an affinity for Patrick Chambers. On the other hand, you certainly understand Rashir Bolton's point of view. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. it doesn't get much more offensive in terms of imagery than a noose, right? Yeah, it, it, it is, Dave. But, you know, the thing of it is, it, these are personal situations, right? And we're talking about something that's been systemic in our society for quite a while. And everybody's going to experience those encounters differently. And so I, I think that what we need to look at more so than the act, we need to try to look at the intent. If we can try to look at the, the behavior of this person throughout the tenure at Penn State. You're talking about Pat Chambers has been there for nine years. He went and got DJ Newbill, um, Tim Frazier, Shep Garner, Josh Reeves, Mike Watkins. He might have saved Michael Watkins' life, seriously, based on the encounters that Michael Watkins had with police authorities and his own battle with depression. Pat Chambers might have saved this young man's life. And so we have to take those in, we have to take his body of work into consideration if we're going to, you know, use this broad stroke of prejudice or social injustice over this one situation. Because it, to my knowledge, it was one situation. But there's a lot of interaction between players and coaches in a season that it, if it all boils down to one situation, that, that's, that's tough for me being a, an ex-player. Yeah, and again, I think maybe we'll find out a little bit more uh, as we learn some details and, and begin to understand whether or not it, again, was an isolated incident, was there more to it. Pat Chambers certainly apologized uh, for the, the comments that he made, but again, the, the comments are out there. Uh, Stephen Bardo, really appreciate your time, really appreciate your insight. I know it's a very short notice today, but thanks so much for, for shedding some light on this situation.